Welcome to our video from chapter 6, section 3, subsection 1, focusing on selecting and sizing corrugated steel decking for roofs using tables for the sizing of decking. This image shows a typical construction for a lightweight steel roofing system. Here you see an open web uh, truss joist supporting corrugated steel decking and on top of that is rigid insulation which is covered by a recovery board and a membrane. The membrane which is usually a single ply membrane in current technology is a very lightweight waterproof element that keeps water out of the building. The recovery board helps to distribute loads so when people walk on the roof they don't do damage to the rigid insulation because even though it's called rigid, it's not really super structural and we can do damage to it when we walk on it, which undermines uh, the quality of the insulation performance. Now you'll notice also here we've shown um, ductwork hanging from the roof and then a suspended ceiling. Uh, typically this ductwork would be estimated to be about one pound per square foot, uh, as would be the case for the suspended ceiling. Those loads actually go on to these roof trusses or roof joists, but not on to the decking. So if we look over here, what's supported on the decking is the membrane, the recovery board, the foam insulation, and the steel decking. And when we estimate all these and we add them together, they end up being about six pounds a square foot of dead load on the decking, including the self-weight of the decking. Um, in some instances we round this up to about 10 pounds to be a little conservative and in fact uh, these numbers for rigid foam insulation have gone up in recent years because of increased standards in terms of uh, thermal performance of the roof. So we might say that in very approximate terms this is about 10 pounds a square foot. In addition to that we typically try to account for unanticipated future loads uh, in the form of mechanical equipment on the roof or whatever that may be. It's really crazy to design a building that only supports the absolute minimal design loads without anticipating some changes in those loads in the future. Uh, this might even include somebody coming along several times in a row and adding new membrane without taking the old membrane off. So typically we'll go instead of six pounds a square foot or 10 pounds a square foot, we'll estimate it to be about 20 pounds a square foot for the dead load on the roof. And then typically the live load on the roof is at least 20 pounds a square foot. And in any place where there's substantial snow load, it, it may go higher. The so-called snow slash live load may go higher than 20 pounds a square foot. This is what typical roofing, corrugated steel roofing decking looks like. Uh, you'll notice it's smooth on all surfaces. You'll also notice that uh, the flute is wider on this surface than on that one. The point being that we want to have as much support under the rigid insulation as possible to minimize damage to the rigid insulation. On the other hand, from a purely structural point of view, We'd rather have this portion of the flange and that portion of the flange be about equal. So this particular profile represents the optimization of a bunch of different design factors, which we need to uh, honor in this design process. And so typically when you buy decking like this, these things have already been worked out for you. This uh, shows an installed version of this decking. You'll notice that the decking is spanning in this direction across these roof trusses. And here we have top cord extensions of the roof trusses to go out and support the overhang. Uh, this decking can span in this direction. It cannot span in the direction perpendicular to its corrugations. It's super weak and super rubbery in that direction. So there's a need to support this all the way out to this edge. This edge, by the way, will typically have a turned up angle on the outside, which represents uh, additional stiffing, stiffening at that edge in a way to mount fascia elements and other elements that are going to be subjected to wind and that need to be pretty structural. This decking, though, is adequate to span under the service load 
from here to there and that edge piece is really not so much for the decking as it is for any kind of local loads that might occur there like somebody putting a ladder up against the edge of the roof or some um, construction workers hanging on the edge of the roof for some reason. Uh, sometimes we need a double cantilever and, and um, that becomes kind of problematical with decking which really can cantilever in one direction but not in the other. So here you have a corner where we have structural elements cantilevering out in this direction to support the decking here and then we have to have them going in that direction and the decking needs to change direction here. So there's a little hole in this corner where they haven't installed the decking yet but eventually they will and it will run all the way from here to this mediating uh, piece on the bias at the corner. Now most decking, let me just jump back for a second or even go here, most of this decking typically runs across several of these support points and so we have continuity over this supporting piece and that continuity pretty drastically increases the stiffness of the decking and decking is typically because it's so shallow and wide it tends to be governed by stiffness criteria and as a consequence that continuity over a support is fairly important. Almost always we try to use it where we have continuity over at least one interior support and preferably two or more. Sometimes we design things though where that's not really possible. For example, this shows two sections through a roofing system where uh, there's a, a truss here and a truss there, one there and one there. We have corrugated decking spanning between a ledger angle on each of these trusses and then we have corrugated decking up here spanning between the top cords of the trusses and then sitting on top of that we have rigid insulation. In this case these dimensions are seven and a half feet that have to be spanned by this decking and that can be done with one and a half inch thickness of decking. Uh, this would be what we would call a single span situation because of the nature of the geometry of this. This decking cannot be continuous over this support because that would violate the truss that's supporting it but also it would be coming into a space here where we don't want it. So this decking is supported at each end in what we call single span or simple span mode and that's true top and bottom. So you have to look at your situation and see whether you can actually achieve spanning over an interior support or not. In other words, do you have to have single span mode or can you have double or triple span or more? The tables, by the way, list up to triple span uh, or three span. They don't go beyond that because four span, five span, etc. are so similar to three span that we simplify the tables by just including the three span mode. Okay, so this shows some typical profiles for this kind of uh, corrugated roofing material. Here we have what's called one and a half B. Uh, the B designates what the actual shape of this thing happens to be. The one and a half means it's one and a half inches thick. You'll notice the maximum sheet length here is 42 feet. So you have to account for that when you start looking at issues of multi-span, but also uh, how your joists are spaced in order to support this. There's a special price for anything less than six feet in length. Uh, you'll notice this decking comes up to in comes out in 36 uh, inch widths. There's a link here that occurs at that joint and at that joint in order to get proper diaphragm action we have to either use a large number of nails, screws, or we have to weld it at that point in order to achieve a diaphragm action. Having 36 inch widths is kind of nice because we only have to do that operation to achieve diaphragm action every th three feet. Uh, in the case of the three inch decking, it only comes in 24 inch widths, uh, which means there's a lot more connecting to do in order to achieve the diaphragm action. We can get decking, by the way, one inch deep, one and a half, two, three, four and a half inches, six inches, seven and a half, and 10 inches deep. 
anything above three inches though only comes in one foot widths. So there's a lot of fabrication or construction work involved in making those seams and connections. You'll notice there are some section properties here and then information about the load carrying capacity of the decking and each of these sheets is organized in the same way uh, in that regard. So we're going to go through some design problems and um, see how these tables are organized. So we're going to start with inch and a half deep decking and right now we're going to show the whole page but in order to make all this stuff readable we're, we're going to actually zoom in closer. So we will crop it where we're looking at basically this portion of the table in order to make those numbers more readable and that looks something like the following. Now um, you'll notice here first of all as we said we've got all these section properties and the key things you want to note here are the B indicates that this is a B shape section 16 means it's 16 gauge and we don't use gauge very much in architecture but this is one of the cases where we do uh, higher numbers for gauge mean it's thinner so for example 16 gauge is 0.0598 inches thick which is close to 0.062 which means the key thing I remember here is 16 gauge is about a sixteenth of an inch and you'll notice they get thinner and thinner as we go down to 24 gauge and we don't go below 24 gauge because basically uh, during construction work people can't walk on it safely without crumpling it. You'll also notice we have weight here in pounds per square foot for painted and galvanized. So the galvanized in each case is 0.1 pounds more uh, per square foot. And uh, which of those you use will depend upon how much weatherability you want and the circumstances under which you're operating. We often drive screws through the roof to hold down the decking of the recovery board and the membrane. Um, that can produce some um, moisture condensation on the screws which can cause corrosion. So generally I have uh, used galvanized material in most of the construction that I've been involved in, but we do for certain circumstances use painted. Uh, down below here we have vertical loads for type 1.5B. Again, this is one and a half inch deep with a B profile. Here we have number of spans. So this is our single span mode that we talked about. Two span, three span, and so forth. If you have a four or five span, you just read it out of the, the three span part of this table. You'll notice for one span we have all the decking gauges from 16 down to 24. We repeat that again for the two span and again for the three span. In this table you'll notice something called the maximum SDI construction span. SDI stands for the Steel Decking Institute and basically they're saying in order to use this safely with construction workers functioning on top of it you need to limit the spans. They're saying for the really heavy gauge B16 you can span 8 feet 8 inches safely under normal construction worker loads. Um, if you want to go down to the lighter gauge you need to have uh, an, a shorter span for the decking. So for example you don't only want to go 4 feet 8 inches for 24 gauge decking to have it be safe during construction operations. Uh, you'll notice that these spans go up when you go to two uh, and three um, span configurations. So for example if you're going to do at least two span this B24 can tolerate up to a 5 foot 10 inch span between joist supports in a two span configuration. Now we also have the allowable load dead plus live uh, uniform load in pounds per square foot as the so-called service load. In other words, after all the construction is done and the corrugated decking is in along with the insulation and the recovery board and so forth, uh, these are the spans that you can tolerate. Um, it, there's no factored loads for these tables, so keep that in mind. Uh, they're saying, what is your total dead plus live? So we take dead, uh, we have been taking it as 20 pounds a square foot, 
um, which is a pretty conservative number to account for possible future load. And we've also taken live as 20 pounds per square foot, which comes to us out of our codes. So the sum of those two is 40 pounds a square foot. So in this table, we would always be looking for something that represents um, 40 pounds a square foot of capacity in service load. For example, that works, that doesn't. So for this particular gauge, 18 gauge, we could go 8 feet 6 inches, but we can't go 9 feet. This is service load. This is construction load limit. We have to satisfy both of those. So let's really quickly uh, work a problem here. We would normally go into this table with some kind of preconceived notion about how far we're going to span with this decking. And then we'd look for something that works. And if we don't like that, then we might change our joist spacing. Uh, but joist spacing may be dictated by a bunch of other things. So we might even want to go into this table with multiple joist spacings in order to have some options. But let's say our corrugated steel roof decking is going to span in one span mode. So that would be supported at each end with no intermediate support, uh, a distance of seven feet, six inches. So in essence, what we're doing is we're looking at this particular problem here and we're asking uh, how heavy does this decking have to be in order to satisfy that criterion. Uh, again, we say dead load is 20 pounds a square foot, live load is 20 pounds a square foot for a total of 40. So we ask, considering 1.5 inch deep corrugated steel decking in one span mode, what is the gauge of decking that is required to meet the maximum SDI specification? So we're going to seven and a half feet and we are in single span mode. So right here we have number of spans one. We need to go at least seven and a half feet. So this says we need at least a B18, or in other words, 18 gauge decking in order to handle the construction loads at a span of seven feet, six inches. So if we go back to our question here, we write 18 gauge right there. It says, what is the gauge of decking that's required? Then we say, considering that same corrugated decking in one span mode, what is the, deck, the gauge of decking that's required to meet the combined service load of dead plus live, which we've said is 40 pounds a square foot. So when we go look at that, we're saying at seven and a half feet, uh, single span mode, um, we cannot do a B21, 21 gauge doesn't work but B20 does. So in other words, we can support 41 pounds a square foot of dead plus live load in, in service mode with 20 gauge material. So we come down here and we write 20 gauge as the answer to this question. Then we say from the results above, what is the gauge of decking that's required to meet both the construction load criterion and the combined service load criterion? And the answer is, you have to pick the stronger of these two. So we're going to pick 18 gauge and we write that down there. Then the question is, what is the self weight of the corrugated decking in painted form and in galvanized form? So we're going to go back here and we're going to say we're looking for 20 gauge and the weight is 2.04 or 2.12 for galvanized. So we're going to write here and I need to make sure that I'm getting this right. So, 20 gauge, I wrote it down wrong. Let me make sure I'm in the right table. Here I am. All right, 20 gauge, 2.04 to 2.14 for 1.5B, and so I'm going to write 2.04 for painted and 2.14 for galvanized. And these are really pretty good numbers, so we can basically say we'll design this roof fine with one and a half inch decking. It's not super heavy, but it's one of the heavier gauge materials, even then though inch and a half deep uh, corrugated decking is not tremendously heavy. 
So two pounds a square foot is a pretty lightweight structure, particularly when you think about the fact that wind suction on a roof might be as high as 20 pounds a square foot upward. So this is this is a very minor minor uh, dead load on. That would be the way we would normally enter these tables. Um, however, we'd like to do one more thing while we're here. We're going to now look at the uh, three inch deep corrugated decking, uh, which again has uh, section properties associated with it and uh, these load tables. And we're going to zoom in on those so that we see the section properties up here and the load tables down here. And we're going to ask a different kind of question. And the question is going to look something like this. Using this three inch deep corrugated steel roof decking in one span mode under the same load conditions. Uh, consider all possible gauges of three inch deep corrugated steel roof decking. What is the maximum SDI construction span? Now, why would we ask that question? Well, for one thing, as designers, we'd like to know how far we can push this material. So knowing that limit's important. And in fact, in chapter one, uh, we talked about spans and proportions, and we wrote out some of those uh, spans and proportions for corrugated decking. And we did that because it's important as designers that we have some idea of how far these things will go and, and at what point we're absurdly pushing the limit, and we need to look at some other uh, structural concept to deal with the issue. So if we go back to these tables, we were asked under construction loads in sp single span mode, how far can we push it? Well, the answer is it's for 16 gauge. We can go 18 feet, six inches and still be safe under construction loads. So that would be our maximum steel decking Institute construction span. So we go here and we write 18 feet, six inches. Then we say, considering all possible gauges of three inch deep corrugated steel roof decking, what's the maximum span under the combined service load of dead plus live, which again is 40 pounds a square foot total. So we're going to go to our table and we're going to say, what's the maximum span? And I think in this problem, actually, I said uh, it is single mode. So we're going to go back here. We're still in single mode. And basically, when we look at this material for the heaviest gauge, it says we're hitting about a capacity of 43 pounds a square foot under service load. In other words, dead plus live uh, at a 15 foot span. So clearly, even if we wanted to go beyond 15 feet, which they don't show in this table, the table could have gone to 16 feet and 17 feet and so forth, but they figured you're not likely to use that because it's getting to be too shallow, but it's clear we're already down to 43 pounds a square foot of capacity. In fact, between 14, six and 15 feet, we dropped from 46 pounds a square foot to 43 pounds a foot. So at 15 feet, six inches, we'd probably be at 40. So for all intents and purposes, we're gonna say 15 feet is the span limit. We might've said 15, six if we wanted to. So then I said, considering all possible gauges of this three inch deep corrugated steel roof decking, what is the maximum span satisfying both the construction limits and the service load limits? And clearly we have to pick the lower of these two. So we put 15 foot uh, zero inches, although we could have put uh, six inches here if we really wanted to sort of push it. So then we take the ratio uh, of the span to depth for this decking. And the ratio is 15 feet times 12 inches per foot, which is 180 inches, divided by the three inch deck. So 180 over three is 60. So we're saying this, the span is about 60 times the depth. So our question is, is this number a reasonable number that's consistent with the guidelines on spans and proportions? Uh, and the answer is yes, because the spans and proportions said that the depth can go up to L over 64. And this would have been almost uh, in, right at 64 if we'd put six inches there. So um, to first order, we are right in the neighborhood of what our spans and proportions table said. We need to keep in mind that the spans and proportions table uh, is trying to be simple. It's trying to cover a wide range of spans of load conditions, 
and support conditions, including one span, two span, three span, and so forth. So to first order, it's pretty astounding that we're even as close as 60 when in the, in the spans and proportions, we said L over 64. But the answer is yes. And so this is an example of how we're using these more detailed tables as a way of going back and demonstrating why our spans and proportions uh, information represents valid design information. It says for decking, you can go up to L over 64, but generally you don't even want to push it that far if you don't have to, because there's good economic reason and structural reason not to, but you can and uh, this is verification of that fact. That ends our video on selecting and sizing corrugated steel decking for roofs using tables.